We've all heard the unbelievable stories of women unaware of a pregnancy, then delivering their baby into the toilet by accident. But call 911 to save themselves and their new bundle of joy that sneaked up on them. But ever heard of prom mom? She's the girl who hid her pregnancy from everyone who knew her and had a baby at her high school senior prom. I'll get into the details later. The year was 1997 and the ending of another school year was approaching. For high school senior Melissa Drexler, she and her boyfriend, who had graduated a couple years before her, were busy making plans for the Lacey High School senior prom. Melissa Drexler was born in 1978 in New Jersey as an only child to very Catholic parents. Her father worked as a shipping clerk and her mother at a local bank. Sounds like a stable family life, so why would she go so far as to hide an entire pregnancy from them? Even her friends and believe it or not, her boyfriend had no clue. Melissa Drexler met her boyfriend, John Lewis, a few years older than her and became pregnant in late 1996. She never gave any real reasoning behind hiding her pregnancy, but it was obvious her hiding it seemed that she either had a plan to discard the baby once it was born, or maybe it was even an, an I'll cross that bridge when I get to it type of scenario, who knows? Or as some experts would later say, she became temporarily insane and tricked her own mind into believing that she wasn't pregnant and life could resume as normal with no one being the wiser which was basically later played into her defense in court. On the day of prom, while Melissa and her boyfriend were heading to the venue, she started to complain of stomach pains. Her water had already broken earlier that morning, so she was in full labor by the time she made it to the Aberdeen Township Banquet Hall on June 6, 1997, where prom was being held. Soon after arriving, she told her friends she fell ill and excused herself to the ladies' room. At one point, her friend who wanted to check on her asked Melissa if she was okay before leaving the restroom, and Melissa tells her she is fine. She even tells her friend to relay a message, I'll be done soon. Go tell the boys we'll be all right. Eventually, her friend returned to prom, believing Melissa was okay. But later, as time progressed, and she was actually in there pushing out a baby, other girls witnessed her feet moving under a stall and saw blood. They also said there were weird noises coming from the stall. One even reported it sounded like two people in there having sex. But none of those reasons were the truth. Melissa was in full-blown labor and at the pushing stage. She eventually gave birth in that bathroom stall. After this happened, she panicked. After all, she had friends, her date, and a prom to get back to. It was later revealed in autopsy reports that her baby was born alive. Once her baby was born in that stall, Melissa used the edge of the sanitary napkin bin to cut the quarter of her baby to separate herself. That autopsy would later reveal the baby was strangled to death. After she killed her baby, she wrapped him in trash bags, then threw him in the bathroom garbage can. After Melissa had given birth in the bathroom at prom to a full-term baby boy that weighed six pounds, then discarded him like trash, she returned to the dance and the dance floor as nothing ever happened. People witnessed her celebrating, but her friend and her boyfriend found her behavior to be a little odd and even suspected maybe she had drunk some spiced punch. She also sat at a table and began eating a salad when one of the chaperones, who I assume was one of the teachers, became concerned for her well-being after some of the girls in the bathroom had heard what was going on while Melissa was in that stall giving birth. So she took her to the side and asked what was going on. Meanwhile, a janitor had also complained about a significant amount of blood left behind in that stall, but Melissa excused it as a heavy menstrual flow. While the janitor is inside this bathroom cleaning it up, he notices that the garbage bag is too heavy. Too heavy for a night of teenagers at prom who are mostly using the garbage can to fill it with paper towels they dried their hands on. When the janitor became suspicious of the weight of that bag, he immediately found the baby boy inside and called 911. The baby was unresponsive and paramedics worked on him for hours to no avail. The baby was dead by now and didn't die from natural causes, which is one reason he could have never been revived. Melissa had murdered her baby after it was born by either strangulation or suffocation, but she wasn't arrested right away. 
At first, she was transported to the hospital where her parents were called, who refused to even believe they had the right daughter, their daughter, until they arrived to see for themselves. All this was going on while Melissa was at prom. Imagine a girl from your school showing up at prom in full labor without anyone ever knowing she was pregnant, then going into the bathroom stall, giving live birth, then murdering her baby, then return to prom to continue the night. And while prom was still commencing, all this discovered while she was still in attendance. After Melissa was checked out in the hospital, she was also arrested the same night and charged with murder. The autopsy was conducted on the baby and determined to have been strangled or smothered in which official findings called the death asphyxia due to manual strangulation and obstruction of the external airway orifices. The Drexler family, her parents, couldn't accept their daughter not only hid her pregnancy from them, but that she couldn't have known what she was doing and wanted a second autopsy performed on the baby. They hired the renowned Dr. Michael Baden, who reported that the autopsy findings were too ambiguous to know whether the baby was alive or not during birth due to all the hours of resuscitation that was performed, therefore found it too difficult to determine the type of death. The hired defense for Melissa involved experts trying to figure out what was going on in the mind of this 18-year-old, why she hid the pregnancy, the birth, and even the result of giving birth, and came up with a mental disorder, of course, that Melissa was able to disassociate herself from the pregnancy, sort of like tricking her mind into believing herself she really wasn't pregnant. But on June 6, 1997, I don't care who you are, if you have a baby in a bathroom stall, you're going to know it especially if you kill it and discard it the way she did. When it came down to the trial, there was no trial. As part of a plea agreement, which brought her initial charge of murder down to aggravated manslaughter in August of 1998, she pled guilty and was sentenced to 15 years. It was reported her boyfriend cried the entire time during her sentencing. She served three years and one month and is free today. After all that, after the experts who said she didn't know what she was doing when she hid her pregnancy, when she gave birth and then committed murder, she had this to say in court. I knew I was pregnant. I concealed the pregnancy from everyone. On the morning of my prom, I began to have cramps. I went to prom and I went into the bathroom and delivered the baby. The baby was born alive. I knowingly took the baby out of the toilet and wrapped a series of garbage bags around the baby. I then placed the baby in another garbage bag, knotted it closed, and threw it in the trash can. In a nutshell, my findings would be, Melissa was aware of everything about her pregnancy and hid it so sneakily she fooled not only her family, friends, and boyfriend, but the school as well. So basically the entire community. It takes too much thought to be able to pull that off. So if you ask me, she knew all along and she knew she would handle it when the time came to try and cover the murder up. The only thing she didn't count on was the last step in her journey. She left all the evidence behind. So this is a cautionary tale. All teenage girls need to know, or any woman not wanting her baby, that today, this kind of tragedy is unnecessary. Most hospitals in the U.S., if not all, provide a safe haven for newborns. You walk in, hand a staff member the baby, walk out, no questions asked. But getting back to Melissa Drexler, before all this, Melissa had dreams in life. She wanted to be a fashion designer when she grew up. Instead, she will forever be known as the prom mom. The school she went to isn't proud of it. The parents had to accept it. They eventually gave the baby a proper name, Christopher, and a proper burial. Today, she is now a married woman with two children of her own. And it fathoms me how someone would be willing to have children with someone who killed her first baby. In 2016, she was proudly announcing she was trying for child number three. Proudly. When just a few years earlier, she was facing murder charges for a baby boy that would have been 25 years old this year, the same age as my son today. So we know she is a mother today, but I doubt she's a fashion designer. The fact she even posted herself socially is mind boggling to me. But I know this, if you Google her name, you will find out who she is and what she was in 1997, the prom mom.